Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Uh, my name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 187, uh, we'll take a look at various categories of architectural characteristics, uh, what some people call non-functional requirements, or NFRs. Uh, you can get a listing of all the lessons I do uh, on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. But in this lesson, we're going to talk about architectural characteristics and specifically categories of these. Because there are literally hundreds of architectural characteristics that might be possibilities for our particular system. And it starts to get overwhelming about which ones to choose and how to know these groupings of them. Wouldn't it be nice if there were groupings of architectural characteristics that fit into loose categories that then we can divide and conquer and reduce the space in which we look for what possible characteristics might be critical for our particular system. And that's exactly what I want to show you. So the three categories that we'll take a look at in architectural characteristics are operational characteristics, process characteristics, and also structural characteristics, all having to do with the architecture of your system or product. Now, in our most recently published book, uh, Head First Software Architecture, uh, we offered up different kinds of categories, three of them, three of them being these, um, but also added a fourth, which um, I'm just going to focus on these ones in this video. Uh, but it's a great reference to be able to go and see other kind of uh, fun ways of categorizing architectural characteristics. Well, let's start our journey with the operational characteristics. Now, these group of characteristics really describe how the system behaves at runtime. And there's a lot of common characteristics. Uh, these are the ones we mostly know about. Things about, for example, responsiveness, uh, the amount of time it takes to get data to the user. Uh, another good example is availability, which we talk about a lot in terms of an architecture characteristic. Uh, the amount of uptime of a system. Uh, usually it's measured in nines of availability, 99.9% .9 availability. Scalability is a very common operational characteristic, the ability of the system to handle increased load with consistent response time or performance and error rates. Also data integrity, uh, one that I like fitting in the operational characteristics piece. Uh, and this really describes that the data across the system is correct and in sync and that there's no data loss in the system. It really has to do with how the system does behave at runtime. Also recoverability. Uh, this might be important in a lot of systems uh, where the ability of the system to start where it left off after a particular crash. And another good example is fault tolerance. Uh, when a failure occurs, uh, other parts of the system continue to run and how fast can we respond and correct that error? These are all really good examples of operational characteristics. Now, there are lots of other characteristics, uh, performance, uh, elasticity, reliability. Uh, there's a lot of them, but these are good representative examples uh, to kind of see what would fit about operational characteristics, runtime behavior. Now, I want to show you a completely different category. And that's the process characteristics. Process-based characteristics still are architectural in nature, but these really describe the ease in which the system can be created and also modified. Uh, some of the very common ones within process are maintainability, uh, which one definition is the ease at which code can be located, modified, or even added. How easy is it to change and understand our source code. Testability is a very common one as well. The ease of testing, but also, more importantly, the completeness of testing, which is definitely an architectural uh, concern. Uh, think about a monolithic system 
and the completeness of testing versus a microservice, single purpose. Uh, that's a good example of where this architectural characteristic would vary based on the architectural style and also structure. A deployability is another common one, which is described about the ceremony, uh, the frequency, and also the overall risk associated with deploying our software. And again, there are certain architecture styles that have low ratings of deployability. Mono, most monoliths have low ratings of deployability because we have to deploy 100% of that code base. Uh, whereas if we go to the other extreme, like microservices, um, the ceremony is not much. The frequency is a, a lot faster, a lot more, but also the risk is less. Again, depending on how much the services communicate with each other. <laughs> now, two others which you might not be familiar with in terms of the overall process and the ease in which you can apply a change. And the first of those is extensibility. Now, the ease in which the structure of that system can be extended for new functionality. Uh, a really good example is the microkernel architecture style, otherwise known as the plugin architecture. This is a great example of extensibility within a monolithic system because additional functionality from a structural standpoint is simply plugged in to that core system. But another process one that's related is adaptability. Now this differs from extensibility because this is a, the, about the ease in which the structure of the system can adapt to changes in the environment and functionality as opposed to extending that. Now these first three right here, as a matter of fact all of these as well, um, all point really to uh, a composite characteristic which I've talked about in a prior vi video, um, agility. Agility, if I could spell correctly here, <laughs> is the ability to respond quickly to change, um, which in fact would require all of these characteristics to be able to change something as quick as possible and get it to our end users as fast as possible. Well, there's one more category I want to show you, and that's the structural characteristics. The structural characteristics uh, really describe how the logical and physical parts of the system are designed and how they interact with each other. The most common of these is, of course, modularity. Uh, the degree to which the system is composed of discrete components, either logical and or physical components, we can still have modularity within a monolithic system. Uh, modular monolith is a fantastic example of this. But also portability, the ability of the system to run on multiple platforms, and interoperability. Now, this is the ability of the system to interface and interact with other systems, maybe third-party services or vendors. Abstraction plays a big part in the structural aspect of our architecture. And this is the level at which parts of the system are isolated from other parts of the system. A good example here would be the old service-oriented architecture, architectural style, SOA, um, which relied on its core foundation of an enterprise service bus, which provided that abstraction so that a restful call can actually, from, from a, a website, uh, Angular, uh, can, with using JSON, can actually invoke some sort of COBOL program on the back end. Um, and that was all about abstraction. And then finally, another example would be workflow. Uh, the ability of a system to manage the, the communication between multiple components or services within a single business process. Now, it's interesting that there is a dividing line, certainly, right here, um, between operational and process. But structural, as I've indicated here, really can contribute to the success of those operational characteristics as well as process. So again, no categorization is perfect, um, but this is pretty close to really being able to grasp and get a good understanding of those architectural characteristics. So this has been Lesson 187, uh, offering up some categorization 
categories of architectural characteristics uh, to help us better choose which ones we might need uh, for our particular system. So thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.